I'd say Captain Picard is definitely correct. This does not look like the Shepherd Forest. Computer, what program is currently running? I'm quite certain you don't have proper security clearance for that information. Well, in that case, what do we have here? Exactly as I thought. One of my tutorial programs is running. Well, considering that I'm dressed like a 21st century nerd, I might as well just record another tutorial. Computer, I would need a chair. No, I would need something slightly more comfortable. Computer, how is this comfortable? Comfort or being comfortable is a sense of physical or psychological... No, I need like uh, a captain's chair. That's it. All right, let's do this. Hello, friends of .NET. I'm Uwe Landworth, and you can find me on Twitter at TerraJobs. Today, it's cold outside again, so I have lit my fireplace again. I've poured myself a little bit of scotch. But more importantly, today is Halloween. So outside, it's creepy and all of it. And I thought maybe we should take the opportunity and talk about a creepy feature. Or is it a feature or is it a bug? It's hard to tell. Of the .NET runtime called binding, specifically binding redirects. and how you troubleshoot issues that result from binding issues. So let's, uh, let's have a look. So first of all, what I have here is I have a solution with a very simple setup. I have a customer and uh, I have a customer printer. And the customer printer is uh, using an immutable array to store a bunch of customers and then all it does is just iterates over the customers to print them. So nothing spectacular here. Um, my customers are also immutable, so they just take three arguments. So again, nothing spectacular there either. So since my typing skills are infamously bad, I've prepared some text here. So you don't have to watch me type. So let me actually uh, use the library that I just created. Um, so I just go to uh, my NuGet packages, go to the internet, search for System collections immutable. I just install. Yep, it's all looking good to me. Now I can uh, add a reference to the class library that I have locally. Add the using, clean up some of the unneeded text here, and I run my program. And booyah, that doesn't look good. So it says something like system file load exception could not file followers family system collections immutable. Hmm, that is odd. Here's the output folder of our application. We have our class library, we have our exe, and we have uh, system collections immutable in there. So what's the problem? Well, let's look inside. Let's start with um, uh, this guy here, this guy here, and then this guy here. So we have system collections immutable, uh, but what's worthwhile seeing here is that what we have is version 1.2.2. Now the class library, if we look closely, references a different version, namely it references version 1136, so an older version. If we look at exe, uh, what does exe reference? Well, the exe references exactly what gets deployed. So in other words, what ends up happening here is that the version that the class library was compiled for is an older versions of system collections immutable uh, compared to what the application was written in. So let's read the error message again. So what it actually says, I mean, it says could not find file or assembly, but if you read ahead, it says, the located assembly's manifest definition does not match the assembly reference. So in other words, what ended up happening is the binder found system collections immutable that the app deployed, but this was version 112, but the one that was requested was 1136. And the common language runtime binder is a little bit picky when it comes to version numbers. Specifically, it will load exactly the version that you were compiled for and no other version, unless you tell the system otherwise. So, and that's where binding redirects kick in. But before we go there, Let's first look at this uh, from another point of view, and that is NuGet packages. So if I say manage NuGet packages for solution, there's this very handy feature called consolidate. 
And Consolidate tells you there's one item that you may want to consolidate. And if you click on that, what it tells you is, it says, well, you have System Collections Immutable. And the, uh, the XE project, binding demo.cs project, references version 1.4. And the class library references 1136. Now keep in mind, these are package versions. These are not assembly versions. However, clearly when you have the same package, you expect the same assembly versions to be in. So what matters here is not so much the version number themselves, but the fact that you have a mismatch in your graph. So effectively, you have an EXE project, references a class library project, and they both depend on collections immutable, but different versions of that. So what I could also do is I could just say, I could just select my class library project and I could just say install, which is basically making it the same as the EXE, and that would totally work too. Now, in a sense, that is cheating because that assumes that you control the entire graph. In our case, that's clearly the case because you know, it's one solution. But imagine for a second that the class library here is not something that is actually local to your project, but let's say that's a different NuGet package. So let's say there's a you know, customer printer NuGet package or something, and that was compiled, let's say, a year ago or two years ago when um, the latest versions of Immutable Collections was 1136 and not the 1.2 that uh, you were using. So of course, you could downgrade your own version now to match what the class library was compiled for. So you could assign it from the other point of view, just downgrading yourself to the same version. And that would al also totally work. But this is inconvenient for two reasons. First of all, let's say there's actually a feature in later version that you want to use, or there's a bug fix in later version that you want to use. So maybe you downgrading just isn't something you would like to do. Another case could be, well, let's say you have three or four packages in your solution, and each of them is compiled against a different version. So if it's more than two, um, then um, it's basically you know, impossible for you to reconcile because you can only you know, match one other thing. You cannot match three things, right? So the general case is avoid having different dependencies, but sometimes that's just how life is. So what other option do you have? Well, let's look at the EXE project here. There's one thing we could enable. So let me unload the project. Let me edit the project. And there's this little handy feature here, which you can add to your project. It's called, no, not that one. Actually, let's start the other way around. Let's first look at the, uh, um, before we unload this project, let me reload this. Um, there's this thing called binding redirects you can do. So let me just drop this thing in here. So what do we do here? So what I'm saying here is, dear common language runtime, since you're so freaking picky about version numbers, how about this? Whenever you see a reference from zero to 1.2, redirect it to 1.2. So the one that the class library was compiled for was 1136, let's say. But it doesn't matter. Any version number that is in that range here, this here I will now say, oh, let's pretend this is version 1.2. And 1.2 happens to be exactly the version that the uh, application is compiled for. So if we now run this program, Ta-da, everything just works fine. Now the problem here is obviously that uh, this is not the kind of XML that you would write um, but just, you know, out of your like right hand, right? Like this just rolls of the tongue essentially, right? Um, secondly, let's say you have 130 assemblies uh, in, your, in your project and there's like four or five of them where the problem exists and this becomes really tedious. You have to know the name, you have to know the freaking public key token and then the actual version number ranges, and this is all like, you know, not something you would like to do. So instead of me doing this, let me just remove this thing again. There's another handy feature that we have for quite a while in the product. It's called automatic binding redirects. So what I can do is I can um, unload the project. I can edit the project file. And now I can just drop in this guy here. Now you may think like, how the heck am I supposed to know to do that? And the answer is, I'm sorry, you are not supposed to know that. Uh, we did this feature quite a while ago. Uh, in fact, we did it, I believe, in 451 uh, of .NET Framework. But we were not brave enough. We were actually quite um, scared, uh, let me put it this way, that doing this automatically would break stuff. So let me first 
show you what happens when you run with this mode. Yes, let me first reload the project. Yes, yes, yes. Let me rerun the project now. Yes, yes, yes. Now I need to start a project or for whatever reason. Now it runs again. If we now look into the config file that we see here, uh, this entry here is present. And uh, let me actually just clean the project to just prove to you that this is not an artifact from the previous build. So let me just rerun this again. Um, and now when we open this thing again, like again, this entry here is there. So what ended up happening is during build, we see the closure of all of your dependencies. So we see that you reference a 1136 and that you deploy a 112, sorry, a 122. And so we say, well, great, let me just add the binary direct to your config file. What's neat is that it's not in here. It's only in the app config file that we drop to the output folder. So if you add new project references or you upgrade project references, if you rebuild the project, you will just automatically update the binding redirects. So why is it not on by default? And the reason it's not on by default, as I said, is we were chickens, and so we didn't turn it on by default. However, um, if you go to this file new project dialog, you can actually control whether it's on by default or not. And the key here is, Make sure you select a version number equal to or higher than 451. I know this is super lame, <laughs> but that's what we did back then. That's what it is. So if you created a project prior to 451 and you just upgraded the project later on, that setting in the project file is missing. So what you want to do is you want to edit the project file and add that setting. If you constantly create new projects that are 451 uh, four, or up, hopefully it's 461 four, four, these days because you know .NET standard and all of that, so um, then you get it already on by default. But if you have an older project you just upgraded, you know, edit this project file. If you cannot remember the magic string, also not too bad, just search for automatic binding redirects. And this read the very first hit is how to enable and disable binary redirects, and it has the snippet right here. So you just copy and paste this into your project file, and then you get binding redirects for your application project. All right, this concludes my uh, very scary Halloween demo. And um, yeah, I think uh, I see you guys uh, next week. Why the heck do I have a balloon in my hand? Oh, that's just fantastic. Um, computer reset program. God damn it. I forgot about the chair. Hello? Who is this? Is this a clown? And if you use binding redirects, your versions can flow too. Your versions can flow too. Your versions can flow too.